in an effort to make our video production higher quality with regards to both our YouTube videos and the skill up content videos that we're creating, we've spent a lot of time over the last little bit upgrading our facility, changing up our sets, and getting better tools and equipments. As part of that though, one thing that continues to, I'm gonna call it plague us a little bit is, for those that are watching that don't realize, most of these videos that we're doing, the Tink Chats, the Tink Mix, and the Tink Text, those are all free scripted. There are no scripts. And that means that everything that we're saying is literally thought up in the moment, which makes editing quite difficult for editors and it's not the best workflow. And especially since that we're going down the road of building video content for training and job development, we thought that we should have a system that allows us to better capture the script. And so making it easier for editors to edit the video, making the script writers uh, actually build a script so that we then can talk to the camera one-on-one -on -one and always follow a set of instructions. Now, is that gonna make the video content better? We hope so. But that means that we need to have something that allows us to capture that. And in the, in the, in the televised world, I suppose, teleprompters are often used and we can either choose to buy one or in our case, choose to make one. So I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna do that with some standard stuff that we can find around almost any shop that's out there and well, build a teleprompter and go in from there. So this build with regards to a teleprompter is gonna be composed of custom 3D printed pieces that we're making. And these are just, these are super simple parts, right? These aren't gonna take a significant amount of time. They don't read, they don't need supports. They are fully printed as is. But the key here is we're gonna take something that most shops have, which are aluminum extrusions. In particular, in this case, they're 1515s. And we're gonna make a teleprompter that will then reflect onto this surface here uh, through a, a tablet that we can then import our scripts to and, and have it play. These things are very standard. Uh, they, I mean, this one is super affordable, super cheap to get, um, and they get the job done. And what we're gonna do then is then build this particular setup and put them onto our camera arm that we built. Um, so let's go. I mean, so as part of the build process, uh, we're trying to capture here is just, I mean, for those that are not familiar, these T-Tracks right here, they are uh, pretty simple. Um, I'm not in a screw and that slides in and, and off to the races we go. And you know, I have some nuts already pre put together on the bottom here. I mean, we do that, we tighten these screws down. I mean, that's as simple as it gets. Okay, I'm gonna go to the build and we'll show you the finished goods after it's done.
All right. This teleprompter is pretty much done. Um, we're gonna have to build some kind of backing cover so that it's not always against a bright background, but it's pretty simple in terms of design. The whole idea is when we're doing the teleprompter, there's a tablet that sits here, the camera shoots through this film, and we're able to read the script from it. When we're not in use, we fold that down, and we get a little bit of optical clarity back. One thing that we realized when we were doing the first initial research for this teleprompter is that the thickness of this film is pretty important. I think we've always seen those videos or at least those um, shots of the teleprompters and you have this ghosting effect of the letters that are kind of mismatched. Well, that comes from the fact that when light bounces up and it refracts to your eyes, if the material is too thick, you end up with two layers of uh, images that well, gets sent to your eyes and that's where you get the ghosting uh, and makes it really really hard to read. What we went with was a 3 or 0.35 millimeter sheet of PTFE, just regular plastic and it works freaking amazing. So I'm gonna put this on that that camera arm there and show you guys roughly you know how it's gonna work so just give me a sec. All right, you guys have seen this camera on before. So the idea is that this camera head comes off. I'm gonna machine a little aluminum washer that you guys saw a little earlier. This guy mounts onto here. Ball head mounts the back. And as you can see, we can position the camera, which I'm filming with right now, right here. Uh, and when it's not in use, this sheet goes down, we shoot without it, and you know, it's a good additional add-on. I'm pretty excited to use this. Um, I think we can make the, the scripted videos a significantly better production value with this than with that, and I'm pretty excited to also have our editors uh, use this to give us better workflow optimization. So that'll be a good addition to what it is that we're trying to do here. One thing that I want to note though is, let me get this out of the way. <laughs> One thing to note though is, uh, you know, when we're evaluating 3D printing inside Tinkering or for any company that we're engaged with, often the question comes up, which is what can we use 3D printing for? And the honest truth is you can use 3D printing for a lot of stuff. And a lot of people think about 3D printing as printing the end products, the things that people are gonna sell. But in fact, a significant amount of things can be printed for within the business from jigs to camera arms to internal purpose products that will give optimization uh, for the business. So you know, there are different ways to think about 3D printing. It's not always about the actual end thing. It is also used in jigs and stuff like that. And we often use, you know, parts like 1515s or laser cut wood, or in this case, laser cut acrylic to get the job done. But we're adding 3D printer components on top of that just to make the products more fitted to us. And the thing is, if we ever expand this set behind us, and this is just one set, if we ever expand to another set, we can make another arm. We can make another teleprompter. It doesn't cost us any more to do the design work because it's already there. And the thing is, as we're using the products that we're, we designed for ourselves, if things don't work out the way they do, an example, this hinge system for the first version of this teleprompter that you guys didn't see, we change them, we redesign them. And the costs to redesign and the time to redesign is not significant. And so, so that's one of the benefits that a lot of, I think, companies don't realize when they're evaluating. And it does require a different way of thinking, but it helps. It helps in every single way. So, um, I'm gonna get a couple B-rolls of me putting this thing onto 
the arm to give you guys a sense of what it is that we're doing. Um, there's a lot of design choices that we went into this. So one thing I didn't mention, this film, that's just double-sided taped onto this black smoked acrylic ring that we laser cut. And that's all it takes to make a product like this. And it works extremely well. Um, yeah. I'm excited to use it. You guys will probably realize that future videos of me talking to a camera will probably be, well, with, with this thing on, so. Okay, get it onto the arm, show you guys some B-rolls, and I'm gonna end this video. So, let me quickly do that. Okay. It's installed, it's on here. You guys can't really see that. This bolt is way too long, and I just used some bearings that we have laying around to act as spacers. I'll get the job done until I get a, a shorter bolt, but camera mount's on, teleprompter portion is on, and uh, yeah, this is gonna work out well. Uh, we're gonna fold this down when it's not in use, getting out of the way and shooting it normally as we would. We did lose a little bit of space on the travel of the arm just because how far back the camera goes, but Uh, I think this is gonna work out fine. I'm gonna probably put a tablet on here, show you guys what it is, or maybe on my phone, and then see if you guys can actually read the text because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, right? So, roll more B-roll. Okay, I've got a teleprompter app on my phone. It's a tiny little phone. Um, ideally, we use this with a tablet. That's what it's built for. But I'm going to move the camera in so you guys can see the actual teleprompter work. Even without a black backdrop, which we're going to be adding once the camera goes on, you can actually read this thing pretty good. So I'm going to move the camera angle. I'm going to shoot it through the, the front so that you guys can see what I'll be seeing. Let me move it and I'll cut right back. Okay, um, that's how we store the arm, by the way, so no one runs into it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the teleprompter is done. Um, I'm pretty excited to use it. I think this is gonna help us with a lot of our production, just tweaking our workflow. And ultimately, at the end of the day, is to produce better content for you guys. And also towards our skill up platform that is looking to build uh, all the, no the necessary knowledge base for anyone that's looking to learn uh, all 3D printing technology, know-how, te uh, the technical operational aspects of the printer and also the design constraints of those printers with regards to what it can and can't do and how you should evaluate which technology to bring into your workflow if you're looking to adopt 3D printing. So it's a short project. It's a project that we've been wanting to just do for our own internal purposes and I thought we'd share with you uh, what that flow is like. Uh, no different really to this arm. This arm was a build for our own. We have some people asking for the files. Andy and I have been talking about what we can do with it. There are some upgrades we want to do to this arm anyways at the end of the day because there are some wonky things with it that we would like to address. But for now, we're not going to tackle it, but we'll probably put out a version 2 when we get around to it. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, you realize this Tink Makes video is just me because, I mean, we don't really need Andy in this one. <laughs> so he'll probably join me in the, in the next one. Once we get that out, I hope, you, I hope to see you guys next time. Um, if you like this video, press the subscribe button, press the notification bell, 
I mean, what else does MD say? I think that's about it. Um, I hope you guys join us for the next Tink Makes episode. That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.